I'm going to demonstrate the technique of doing a simple acid-base titration. Because the titration has to be quantitative, we want to be very accurate and precise in the results we get, we need to make sure that our glassware is prepared appropriately. Our flasks and beakers that we may use all need to be rinsed three times with distilled water. I will show you very quickly just how to rinse your flask. A wash bottle, just a small volume. Make sure that you wash all of the inside walls and do that three times for each flask and then three times for each of your beakers. We need to use two pieces of glassware for the accurate measurement of the volumes involved in our titration. The first of these is a pipette. Now the pipette needs to be rinsed three times with your deionized de water and then three times with the acid that I'm going to put in it. So in order to rinse with the water, I'm going to put some water into my rinse beaker here. Now obviously we need a way of getting our solution into the pipette. And to do that we need to use a pipette filler of some sort. With this particular type, it has three valves which control the flow of air in and out of the filler. The valve at the top, if I squeeze that, I can evacuate the bulb. Now, this part here is the part where you need to be extremely careful to do it the right way. You must hold your pipette right up the very top. Do not hold it by the bulb, because doing that, you have a long, thin section which, under a bit of pressure, will break. And that, in turn, can result in very, very nasty lacerations to your hand. So you hold it right at the top, just push it gently into the bottom of the pipette filler. And now, the second valve here, which says S, mean, for me means suck. We can suck some of our water up into the pipette, take off the filler, and you rotate so that all of the inside walls of the pipette are thoroughly rinsed with the water. And let it drain out. Now, we need to do that three times with the deionized water and then three times with the acid. I have rinsed my beaker with some of the HCl that, I'm put, that I've put in it and I now have some HCl in there which I can use to rinse the pipette. When you're removing the pipette, it's easy to do if you haven't jammed it on too hard. Now with all four of my flasks rinsed with the DI water and my pipette rinsed with the water and then the acid, I'm going to transfer acid into the flasks. And again, pipette filler, just push it on gently. Now I have my flask right beside the beaker. And when we're using our pipette filler, we need to make sure that the tip of the pipette always stays under the surface of the liquid. Otherwise, you can suck air up and that will go up into your bulb and wreck your pipette filler. So we keep squeezing until we get the liquid level up above the etched mark on the straight, straight section of the pipette. So we take it up above that mark, just a little bit. And then the third valve, which says E, evacuate. We squeeze that gently just to bring the meniscus down to the line. Make sure your eyes are level. If you go down too far, suck up a bit more. Have your flask close at hand. Flick the filler off and allow it to drain. 
when the liquid stops flowing out of the pipette, there will still be some in the tip. We need to, make, to get a little bit more out, and to do that, we hold the tip of the pipette against the wall of the flask. Small amount more will drain out, but there will be some left. That is how it's meant to function. I have now pipetted the 20 mils of acid into each of my four flasks, and I'm going to put in three drops of phenolphthalein indicator into each. My other piece of volumetric glassware is a burette. As you can see, has a long straight section with graduations and a tap at the bottom and a fine tip. This is used to allow us to measure the liquid that we are putting into the flask. Now this also needs to be rinsed thoroughly. Initially, three small rinses of deionized water. The same procedure as for the pipette. Run in a small volume and rotate so that you can thoroughly rinse all the walls of the burette. This is a good time to check that your burette is functioning properly, that you can turn the tap easily, it doesn't leak, and that it flows smoothly from the tip. I will do that three times with the eye water and then three times with the base. I will demonstrate rinsing with the base. In order to pour solutions safely into the burette, we need to use a funnel. I have my sodium hydroxide in the beaker. Pour a small quantity in. Again, close the tap and rotate. So what we're doing here is ensuring that all of the water that was in there is removed and that any solution that remains in there is the same as what's come out of my bottle. I have now finished rinsing my burette and I have placed it in a burette clamp attached to a retort stand. In setting it up, I've had to make sure that it is actually vertical because we don't want to introduce any parallax error when we come to reading the burette. As this stands at the moment, it's not safe for me to fill this. We need to fill it by putting a funnel in the top and pouring our solution in. If I fill this as I am, I will be filling this above eye level, which is potentially hazardous. So there are a number of ways to overcome this. One way is to use a small step. Another way to get the top of your burette below eye level is to swing it around so that your burette is hanging over the edge of your bench. If that's not possible and you don't want to use a stool, then you can take it to the sink and fill it at the sink. I will now fill my burette. I have the funnel in, I have the tap open, and you can see my eyes are above the top of the burette. I hold the funnel up a little bit so that I don't get an airlock and pour in a small amount. I check the tip of my burette to make sure that there are no bubbles of air in that and then I can close the tap. Now I'm going to fill to somewhere near the zero level. It does not have to be exactly on zero, that's just a waste of time. and take out the funnel. Now, be before I begin doing my, my first titration, I need to actually read the volume in the burette. You'll see that your burette starts at zero and goes down, in this case, to 50 mils. So we read down. It's not an up scale, we read down. Now, when I read this one, I can use a just a plain piece of paper or I can use what I call a burette reader card. 
to make it just a little bit easier to visualize the meniscus. And when I read this, I am reading it at 1.79 mil. I will now show you how to do the actual titration. You'll see that I have my flask underneath the burette. The tip of the burette is inside the neck of the flask, but not too far down. Classical procedure is to use your left hand to operate the tap so that your thumb is facing you, your fingers are wrapping around the other side. Your right hand will swirl the flask as you run the base in. So the fine tip allows us to add base in a fairly controlled manner. So at the moment I'm simply allowing it to run in. What we have to do is to keep adding the base until we get a permanent pink, not too dark, and that potentially will fade within 10 seconds of appearing. So you can see at this stage that I am getting close to my end point. So at this stage, I can rinse down the walls of the flask. I can also rinse off the tip of my burette. And I can now slow down my rate of addition. Now, that was very close. Now, if you see that faded quite quickly, I want that pink to last for 10 seconds. So, at this stage I'm trying to just get half a drop to hang on the tip of the burette. And I can then wash that in with my wash bottle. If you end up going to a colour like this, that is in fact too dark. You've gone past the end point. Even as I keep on swirling, it does not fade. So I'll have to count this one as a rough one and attempt to do a far more accurate one in a second round. Again, I take a reading. On 23.21. So having done that first one, gives me a pretty fair idea of where my endpoint should be. So in a second titration, I can run the solution through much more quickly and stop when I'm close to the endpoint. Having done one titration, I'm going to do a second. I have recorded my burette level and I know that I have enough solution left in the burette to do a second one before I need to refill. Now, I know that I can run it in fairly quickly for about 20 mils, so that will take me down to 43. At the moment, I'm delivering one drop at a time. Now, that end point was good, but it faded too quickly. So, rinsing everything down. Again, not quite the 10 seconds.
can. That was the endpoint we want. Taking a final reading, I have 44.40. Now that I've done a second one, which I know is more accurate than the first, I can see that my tithes have changed from 21.42 to that one where I went over the mark to 21.19. I now need to do a further two titrations, aiming for consistency and getting a constant volume.